Hello and welcome to our Python programming course. I'm really excited to have you with us as we start this amazing journey into coding. Whether you are just starting or looking to learn more, this course aims to teach Python programming in a way that's true but still simple to grasp. What is Python? First, let's discuss what Python is. Python is a programming language that high level meaning is a strange forward and clear to read. It lets you code with fewer steps than other languages like C++ or Java. Python is flexible and used for many things like making websites, analyze data, and even in artificial intelligence. Because it's so user friendly, it's a great choice for beginners and also popular with experienced developers. Now that we have covered the basic of what Python is, let's explore why learning Python is an important skill in today's technology focused world. Why learn Python? Learning Python opens up many opportunities. It's not only about writing code, it's about solving problems and automating tasks. Python simplicity means you can focus more on solving problems rather than getting bogged down with complex syntax. This language has a massive community providing a wealth of resources and support. Additionally, Python's versatility in various fields like web development, data science, and machine learning make it a high, highly sought after skill in a job market. Understanding the importance of Python you might be eager to start coding. So let's set up our coding environment with Visual Studio Code and write our first Python program. Welcome back. Now it's time to begin coding. We are going to use Visual Studio Code as our coding tool. It's great for programming, especially if you are just starting because it's easy to use and has lots of useful things. First, we need to get our coding area ready. If you haven't done so yet, go and get Visual Studio Code from its official website and put it on your computer. Also, you can use this website for installing. After that, open Visual Studio Code. You also need to have Python in your computer. If you haven't put Python on your computer yet, go to the Python website, get it, uh, get it and follow the steps to put it on and also you can use this website for installing it after you put python on your computer we need to set up visual studio code so it's work with python open visual studio code and look for extension area and click on that and in the search part you can search python Click on Python and install it in your computer. And the Python extension from Microsoft will be installed in your system. These tools help uh, helps a lot with writing Python codes in Visual Studio Code. Now that we have uh, got everything set up, let's write our very first uh, Python script. In Visual Studio Code, click on File. You want to close it, and then, and in New File, we have two choices: text file and Python file. My advice is to click on Python file because it's uh, directly make a .dot file extension, and after that, you can easily save it. For example, uh, you can exercise one dot py it means that python extension and uh, after that this uh, let's visual studio code now it's a python file next let's write a really simple program you can practice or uh, you can write it in your visual studio code now with me at first, we want to write print hello world. Uh, 
This code is like uh, the first step in learning any programming language. The print in this part in Python shows what you put inside the brackets on your screen. Here it will show the word hello world. After you have uh, written the code, you can also save your file here and uh, you can run your program and you can see the result of this code in the terminal part. For running uh, your Python code, you can go to run menu and go start debugging or directly you can click on uh, F5 on your keyboard. After that, you can see this function. This means uh, everything is running and you can also see your result here. Hello board. Great job. You just written and made your first Python program works using Visual Studio Code. This is a big first step in learning to program. As we go on uh, in this course, uh, we will add more or more to what you have learned. Trying out more, more things in Python and solving bigger problems. Remember, practicing is uh, really important in programming. So go ahead and play around with the code and try new stuff. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you make and learn. See you in next class. Welcome back to our Python programming course. In this chapter, we'll dive into the world of variables and operators. Understanding these concepts is crucial as they form the building blocks of programming in Python. Let's start by exploring what variables are and how we use them. Variables in programming are similar to variables in mathematics. They are symbols that we use to store data values. Think of variables as containers or boxes where you can store information. In Python, creating a variable is easy. You simply assign a value to variable name. Let's look at the example. In this part, you can write your part, your code. For example, you can enter and you can write your code what place that you want. It's up to you. For example, I want to write agree thing equal or we can use with that. Hello. Hello, Python. Here, greeting is the variable. Greeting is the variable. And uh, it holds the value hello, Python, which is a string of text. Notice that we use the equal sign to assign the value to the variable. Put it this value in this variable. This equal sign is called the assignment operator. It's important to name your variable in a way that make your code easy to read and understand. Python has some rules for variables names. For example, the first rule for variables names is you can uh, use some uh, texts or some name that they must start with a letter or underscore. For example, greeting is equal to one or greeting equal one is up to you you can choose whatever you want the second 
rule is uh, they cannot start with number for example you cannot put a number at the first of your variable for example two grading it's not true you can see a special color here red red means it's not true for example one you cannot use you have to delete that the third rule is uh, they can only contain characters and underscores for example you can use underscore for starting blah 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 or for example you can use numbers equal to one or you can use capital words it's up to you my advice is using uh, different variables for example greeting and greeting is not good maybe you will be confused about that and uh, there are some case sensitive for example in these two exercise or examples for example greeting greeting in this part or greeting in this part they are so similar to each other but first word of these two examples are different so we have two different variables for example if you want to use age equal to 30 or age equal 30 they are two different variables now that we know how to create variables let's explore the different type of operation we can perform with them operator are special symbol in python that carry out arithmetic or logical computation we'll start with arithmetic operator which are used perform mathematical operation like addition subtraction multiplication and division here are some common arithmetic operator addition addition uh, add two valuable together another thing is subtraction subtraction uh, uh, subtracts the right hand operand uh, from the left hand operand the next part is multiplication multiple uh, multiplies two values together and the last one is the last one is division with this component you divide the, the left hand operand by the right hand of right and uh, we can see mm, these actions in uh, some exercises let's see this operator in action with some variables I wanna delete all part for example we have number one equal to ten and we have number two equal to five at first we want to start with sum we want to make a variable put everything in this variable we want to add uh, the number one plus number two we want to show the difference between two number difference 
number one minus number two multiplication and uh, we want to use multi equal number one multiply by number two for division dv division number one divided by number And after that, we want to uh, see the result. The best way to see the result is that you can print the, some of the result of each part. For example, uh, you can use the print function, print, if you put uh, double quotes you can write an, a string variable that we want to say to you in next sessions and uh, we want to show the result and after that i have to use a comma and then i have to use my variable in this part we can uh, see the result in the terminal terminal part of your visual code we can simply copy that and you, and you can use control plus uh, C and use in this part with control and V or paste it click rust in this part and you can paste it easily we want to show the difference between two number and difference you have to do it for another part copy and paste it and And at the end, we can show the result of the division. Copy that, paste that. And we want to call this variable. On the other hand, uh, you can use all of the print function at the end of your program at first we want to run, run this program you can here see the result you can easily see the result of each part and on the other hand you can use easily or copy paste you can cut and you can edit your program it look like this that two way they are so similar to each other And if you run, you can see the similar result. You can see the similar result. It's up to you to how to uh, configure or write your program. And uh, in conclusion, I want to say that in this chapter, you have learned about variables and some basic operators in Python. 
variables are the function of any programming language and understanding how to use them effectively is key to writing good code operators allow us to perform operation on these variables as you continue your journey in python programming you will see just how powerful this tool can be in the next chapter we will delve deeper in python and explore more complex concepts happy coding and i will see you in next lesson welcome back welcome to chapter four let's explore different kind of data in python a data type is what kind of data a variable can hold we will start with three basic type whole number decimal numbers and text at first we want to start with whole numbers or integers whole numbers are numbers without any decimal part look like minus five zero seven eight or etc to use a whole number in python you just set a variable to that number for example user age equal 20 or mobile number equal 1 2 3 4 5 this is an example of an integer number. It's very simple and usual. Another type of data is a decimal number. Decimal number are number with a decimal part like 1.234 or minus 0 0.023 or 13.01 and etc to use a decimal number in python you assign it to a variable just like a whole number looks like last part example user height equal 9.82 or for example, uh, user weight equal 69.7. That was a good example of that. And the uh, second part is the text file, or we can call it to strings text in python is called uh, strings to use text you put it inside single quote or double quotes for example uh, you can uh, use it in here username equal up or user or user name equal to Janet This is a string, also this is an string. Uh, and you have to be careful if you write user age, for example, uh, 13 in uh, single quote, it's text. If you write user age 30, it's a whole number. Look at this. User age equal 
this is a text file this is a text file and user page equal 30 this is a number this is not a string you have to be careful about that and you can in another, in another part for example you can join some text together with this formula for example you can write uh, user user name equal to double quotes for example William in this position you have to put some, a plus between two words together another double quotes and you can put far in result you have William far if you want to use for example in program or do you want to print it you can see this result welcome back we're gonna start with typecasting in Python first let's understand typecasting in Python sometimes we need to change a data from one type to another this is called typecasting Python makes this easy with some built-in function let's explore them at first step we're gonna start with integer function Let's start with the integer function. This function converts decimal number or certain, uh, certain string to whole numbers. I will show you how it works. Open Visual Studio Code and let's write some codes. You can easily write your code or type this uh, in your Visual Studio Code. For showing a result, it's better to use a print and after that we going to use the integer function to change it to change this number for example 5.8932 to an integer after running the program you can see your result in terminal this is our result we convert the float to an integer output. It will be 5. And for example, in another thing, we can use a string print integer double quotes and for example, 4. Start. and you can see the result here this is 4 convert this string this is an, a string to an integer output will be 4 now run this code um, you, you can modify this or do some example for yourself you will see the decimal part in remove from the float and the string 4 is converted to an integer step 2 next we have a, a, we have the float function it change whole number or certain string to a decimal number let's try this also you can uh, type this in uh, visual studio code We can also use print and float. For example, two. After that, we can run the program. You can see this result two point zero that uh, we convert the integer to a float output will be 2.0 or 
another for example number it can be for example two point uh, special number for example In this position, we want to convert the string to a float. Output will be output will be this, look like this. You will see the integer turn into the decimal number and the string to point eight three eight two one is now a float a step three a string function lastly the a string function change the number to text this is really useful in many situations let's code this we can use print and str string for example 2.1 in this position we want to convert the float to a string output will be two point one you will see that the float two point one is now a string two point one Welcome back. We want to start with list in Python. Moving on. Let's learn about list. A list in Python is a collection of items. It's like a container where you can store different values. Let's see how to create a, how to or how to work with list. At the step one, we want to create a list. To create a list, we use square brackets. This is square bracket and let's create a list of edges. For example, you want to know your user edges. At first, we can make a variable, for example, user edges equal square bracket. And for example, we can write 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. After that, we can easily print it. Print this value, user age. We can run that. And in terminal we can see our result you will see the list of age printout in a step 2 we want to say about accessing list item we can access a specific item in list by their index remember in Python index start from zero start at zero this is zero this is one this is two three and this is four for example we want to show the zero you can for example print user age and this part you can see which part of your index you can see zero the first part of your index after that we can run it and this will print the first item in the list which is 21 in a step 3 we want to modify a list for example we write a list and we want to change this number this number whatever you want we can also change the item in list let's change second edge to 13 this edge to 13 we can easily write 
your main variable user age and after that we say which part of the index do we want to change we want to say one and 30 now 30 will be changed and uh, number 22 will be modified and after that we can uh, see the result print and user age let's run that yes you can see the number 22 deleted and the number 13 replaced with that number after that uh, in step 4 we want to add or remove some items from this list to add some item we use the append method append method and uh, to remove item we use the delete on your keyboard let's do an exercise here for example we want to delete uh, one thing uh, from uh, or we want to add something to our index at first this is our main uh, variable this is our main index and in this position we want to say user age dot append for example we want to add some number 26 and after that we want to see the results print user age let's run it now uh, the list is uh, 21 23 24 25 and 26 and in next position in next uh, section we want to for example we want to remove this number we want to remove this number from our index we can use de l user age and after that we can print it let's see the result this list uh, this list is now uh, 21 22 24 25 in this position 0 1 2 we delete this number the 23 deleted and in this result we don't have 23 and at the end uh, that's what I want to say uh, that's a basic introduction to typecasting and list in Python using uh, Visual Studio remember practice is key so feel free to experiment with the code in our next lesson we will dive deeper into python see you then hello everyone and welcome back to our python programming series today we are going to learn about two more type of data in python tuples and dictionaries we will go through each step by step and I will show you how to use them in Visual Studio Code. Let's get started. Part 1. We want to start with tuples in Python. Tuples are like lists, but the big difference is that you cannot change them once you create them. They are useful for data uh, that shouldn't change. Let's see how to work with tuples. At first, 
we want to create a tuples. For example, we want to uh, make variables color colors and parentheses and after that red comma space or comma black and blue at first we want to see the result print colors you can run it and you can see the result in terminal file red black blue this will print out the entire tuples In step two, we want to accessing tuples item. Accessing item in tuples is similar to accessing item in a list. You use the index number. If you remember, in index, displays one zero, one, and two. And uh, the index started from uh, zero, one blue. 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 blah. For example, we want to print color and we need our first. For example, the 1. And after that, let's start it. Now you can see the black because in this place, this is one, zero, one, two. So we can see the black. In the next part, uh, we want to start with dictionaries in Python. Uh, now le uh, it, let's talk about dictionaries. Dictionaries store data as uh, pairs a key and a value. They are uh, super useful for storing related information. Uh, let's go and uh, create a dictionary. To create a dictionary we use curly brackets let's create the dictionary for storing user age you at first we need a variable user age equal curly bracket and for example, William with uh, 30 years old, Papa with 27 years old. and Charlie with 35 years old let's print it to see the result print user age right On this code and you will see the dictionary with name and ages uh, 
After that, we want to accessing dictionary items. To get a value from a dictionary, you use this key. For example, we need uh, William H. Print user age main variable and say William. Yes, and we can run it. Now you can see the result 30 William of 30 years old age. In the next part, we want to modify a dictionary. We can add a new item to a dictionary or change exciting one. Let's add a new user and change, uh, change Bob's age. You can change uh, whatever you want, each place, each part of this part. You can change everything that you want. At first, we want to change user age, main variable, and uh, we need to change. to 31 or 32 let's print it print user age now you can see this number change at first that was uh, 27 and now it's 32 because we want to change the Bob's age. In the next part uh, we want to add a new friend, a new guy to this list. We want to use uh, or add the David. User age. David with 40 years old and I'll just start it and now you can see the result you will see the Bob's age updated and David uh, added to the dictionary at the end of this David at at the end of the yeah, our program at the end of this list and uh, at the end we want to remove an item from a dictionary for example uh, we want to remove Charlie from our uh, dictionary. We want to remove it. And uh, we use DEL user age. In this position, we uh, have to say which part of uh, your dictionary wants to delete. We want to say Charlie and then we can print print user age. We can start it. Now you can see the Charlie deleted from our uh, dictionary. Now we have William and Bob. In conclusion, we have it and the uh, introduction to tuples and dictionaries in Python. 
using uh, Visual Studio Code. This structure are essential in Python programming. Try creating your own tuples and dictionaries to see how they can organize data efficiently. And uh, in next time, we will explore more Python concepts. Keep practicing and see you in our next lesson. Hello everyone, welcome back to our Python programming class. Today we are going to learn how to make your program interactive. This means your program will be able to accept input from users and respond accordingly. Let's get started in Visual Studio Code. In first part, we want to start with getting users input. We'll learn how to get input from users and Python make this easy with uh, a built-in function called input. This function, the input function allows you to allows your program to pause and wait for the users to type something. After they press enter, the program continue with the user's input. We can do an example to show the good result of this input. At first, it's better to make a variable username equal the input function and then you want to ask a question or show something at first to the customer or user enter your name please and after that we want to print something print hello dear and after that we want to show the user's input the username we have to say plus plus means uh, we want to combine something with another things for example this message with username and username and then plus at the end we want to add something for example this and after that we can start it at first you will see at first the program will ask you to enter your name and then we want to press enter after that it will greet you with your name hello dear William in the code uh, we just wrote the username is the stored in variable card username this means we can use the user's input later in our programs at first uh, the programs uh, put your input in the username variable and you can use the username in all part of your program in part two, we want to using the user's input in decision making. We can do this uh, with if statement. If statement look like this. And uh, let's make a simple program that responds differently based on user's input. We will ask the user a question and then use if and else to respond to their answer. For example, we can ask about a color, about a favorite color. And then input the text of R. 
message at first what is your color and then this place is for users to input something or write something here and then enter it and after that we have to know what is uh, our input Fa if favorite color dot lower double equal and then for example we want to say red and we want to say we want to print for example something print you love the color of for example uh, of the rose and uh, if the user's input is another thing else else means that We want to print that is a great color, but I love red. Let's see the result. We will uh, check um, the we, we check if the user's favorite color is blue or red or something like that. If it is red, we print a special message. Otherwise, we print a different message. We want to test it now. At first, we want to, for example, write blue, blue, and then enter. You can see that is great color, but I love red, this part. And we want to start it again. What is your favorite color? I want to say red. Oh, you love the color of the rose and this part. Great job, everyone. Now we know how to make your Python program interactive using uh, user input and if statement in Visual Studio Code. Practice by creating your own interactive program. Experiment with different questions and response. In our next lesson, we will explore more exciting Python features. Until then, happy coding! Hello everyone and welcome to our Python programming lesson. Today we are going to learn about making choices and decisions in Python using conditional statement. Conditional statements are a fundamental part of programming allowing your program to make decision based on certain conditions condition statement in python are written with if elif which uh, stand for else if and else if elif and the else 
They help. Uh, they help your program decide what to do based on different situation. And step one, we want to using the if statement. The if statement checks a condition and run code only if the condition is true. Let's try a simple example. We want to write a code about age. And this is our main variable, age. We want to say if age greater and equal 18 then print you are the vault let's do it we want to run it run this code and since the age is 18 the condition age bigger or equal 18 is true so it means you are an adult in the next step we want to adding uh, the else statement to this condition we want to say we can add another condition else else and then then print you are not adult see and uh, in this condition uh, we want to change the uh, input variable we want to put it 60 and then we run in this position we can see you are not an adult the age is 16 so the if condition is false this is false and uh, it prints you are not an adult because the next condition will be approved and you can see this part uh, in the step 3 we want to using elif for multiple conditions sometimes you might have multiple connection to conditions to check uh, this is where elif is useful and we can easily modifying our code at first uh, for example for this part we can add an elif after this one we can enter and we can say elif Elif, uh, we can use it here. Excuse me. Elif, age is between eighteen and uh, the age of for example 13 then print you are a teenager
and then we can combine it with our else so we have three condition we want to run it the code checks uh, if person is an adult a teenager or child three condition one two three and you can see the result this condition is true so the output is printing you are a teenager this is an example and uh, in the next part we want to combining some conditions with together for example you can combine condition using and or and not and or and not these are called logical operators let's see an example for example our age is 20 well, 20 and uh, we want to add another things for example we want to say has license for example equal to true this is a boolean if age uh, yeah. if age is bigger and equal to 18 and uh, has license then do this print you can drive for example you want to make a robot a for example that police robots you can use for example this condition else print this code checks if some someone is old enough to drive and has a drive license you can drive because you are 18 you are more than 18 and uh, you have a license it's true and uh, you can combine another things with together for example in the you can use or it's a logical and then for logical things you can use everything and uh, that's how to use condition statements in Python to make decisions. Remember, if, elif, and else are powerful tools for controlling the flow of your program based on different conditions. In next sessions, we want to uh, use uh, another condition, or for example, in next programs, we can use or and or not. You can uh, use it in your condition practice on your PC or system and your visual code and try uh, creating creating your own program with different condition statement to practice in uh, our next lesson we will explore more about Python decision-making capabilities see you then and happy coding Hello everyone, welcome to our Python programming class. Today we are going to learn about for loops in Python. For loops are a fundamental concepts in programming, allowing us to repeat a block of code multiple times. We will be using Visual Studio Code to write and uh, run our example. Let's begin. Uh, for loops uh, in Python lets us execute the block of code repeatedly for a certain number of times. It's especially useful when we want to do something with each item in a list or a range of numbers. 
the step one we want to using a for loop with a list first let's see how we can use for loop in uh, with a list well we make a list of fruits and print each fruit in a list we can do it with an example you can write it in your visual studio code and at first one we can make a variable fruits equal apple mm, banana come on and uh, cherry this is our first value and we wanna print it in this part we want to use a four and then we want to call fruits fruits in and the linter and we want to print focusing part this is for fruit in fruits for fruit in fruits and then we want to print fruit here let's uh, run this code on the terminal you can see the for loops goes through each of item in fruits list and print it apple banana and cherry In step two, using a for loop with a range function. Next, let's uh, use a for loop with a range function. This is range, range function. This is helpful when you want to repeat something a certain num uh, certain uh, certain number of times. For example, we want to say for numbers for example for number in range 5 and then we want to print number this is a variable in range of 5 and after that we want to print this variable let's start it it will print the number from 0 to 4 the range 5 crea creates a sequence of number from uh, 0 up to but not including 5 in the part 2 we want to combine for loops uh, with conditional statement we can also combine for loops with a conditional statement for conditional statements to make our code more powerful let's and uh, let's add an if statement inside a for loop We want to change your code. You can practice. For number. For number. In range. I want to write 10. 10 times. And then. If. This is our condition. If number. 
two equal zero. If you focus in the code, yeah, you can see uh, the code check if each number in range from 9 to 0 is even or odd and prints a message accordingly. Let's do it. Now we can see the odd are even. Three is odd, four is even, five is odd, six is even, and then ten until the nine. Started from zero to nine because our range is in ten. In uh, step three, sometimes uh, I want to say that uh, sometimes uh, you might need a loop inside another loop. These are called nest loop. So let's write an uh, example to see how it works. For example, we want to say for x in range three and four y for y in range 3 print F. Maybe it seems uh, so dangerous, but it's not. Yeah, if you practice too much, you can learn it very easily. And run it. The code will print pairs of numbers, uh, showing how the uh, other loops x and the inner loop y works together. You can see zero and one, zero, one, one. One, two, and blah blah blah. It's not very difficult. You can uh, have some practice to know or to feel the four more and more. And uh, in conclusion, I want to say uh, that's how you see uh, for loops in Python. They are incredibly useful for automating and uh, operating tasks efficiently and try creating your own for loops with different list range and conditions in our next lesson we will uh, dive deeper into python programming until then uh, keep practicing happy coding Hi everyone and welcome back to our Python programming series. Today we are going to explore while loops and how to control them using break and continue. Break and continue. These concepts are crucial for controlling the flow of your program. We'll go through each concept with examples in Visual Studio Code. Let's get started. In part 1 we want to understanding while loops. A while loop in Python repeated a block of code as long as a certain condition is true. It's a bit different from for loop which repeated code a set number of times. 
let's start with a basic while loop we will create the loop that keep running until a counter reaches a certain number at first we want to do an example we want to use or make in variable counter is equal zero and then while while counter it's lower than five then print counter is counter here and then we want to add something to counter counter It means in uh, each time we want to add this number to counter. We want to run this code and I will print the value of counter until it reach 5. Counter is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now uh, that we understand why loops, let's see how we can control them using uh, break and continue. At first, we want to using a break in a while loop. Uh, the break statement can stop a loop even if uh, while condition is still true. Let's use it uh, in an example. Imagine uh, we want to stop the loop when the counter reach three. We can do we can do that with break. Let's do an example. For example, counter is zero, and then while counter lower than five, then if counter equal 3 then break and uh, print counter is and here we want to show a number counter and then we want to add something to counter in each while loop counter plus equal one run it the loop while stop uh, when the counter is three even though the condition is to continue until five while uh, break stop break stop the loop continue skip the rest of the code inside the loop for the current iteration and uh, move to the next one let's see how it works uh, in this position in part 3 we want to using continue in a while loop and uh, I want to say sometimes we might want to skip part of the loop for certain conditions the continue statement does exactly that we will use continue to skip printing the number three we can modify our code for example we can delete this and we want to say counter One and we want to write a condition if counter equal three continue print. 
print there is and then we want to add something counter when you run this notice how it uh, skips uh, number three and doesn't sprint it you can see one two four five not three one two four five and uh, that's how and um, that's how you use while loops along uh, with break and continue in Python these tools give you more control over how your loops run experiment with different condition and control to see how they works together in our next lesson we'll dive into more advanced Python topics keep practicing and uh, see you next time Hello everyone and welcome to today's Python programming lesson. In this lesson we are going to learn about functions. Functions are a key part of Python and programming in general. They help us organize our code, make it reasonable and much more manageable. Let's get started in Visual Studio Code and see how functions work. A function in programming or a function in Python is a block of code that performs a specific task. You can think of uh, you can think uh, of it as a small machine that tasks some inputs, does something with it, and then give back a result. In step one, we want to know defining a simple function. First, let's define a simple function. We will create a function that say hello to user. We can start an example. In this sample, we want to make it if, and they say hello and uh, name. Then print a greeting. For example, hello, come on, and we can add her name, and we can add another string look like this. This is our say hello function. It takes one parameter's name and print a greeting. I'm gonna step to uh, to use our function we want to call it with a name let's do that now for example we can write code here say hello and in this part we have to say name run this code And uh, you will see it's it sprints uh, hello William. Now that uh, we have seen a basic function, let's make uh, something a bit more complex with a return value. In part two, function with return value and uh, in function uh, in functions can also return values. This is a useful when you want your function to calculate something and give the result back. A step three is uh, creating a function with a return value. Let's create a function that add two number and return the result. You can see this uh, result in this example. For example, if add numbers. For example, we want to give two number. Num1 and num2. Then return 
num1 plus plus num2 then uh, for our main code we can make a variable for example result result equal add numbers we can give two for example number uh, for example three and uh, four or three or five and then we want to uh, print print at first we want to start uh, string the yeah. for example result is and after that we can show the result this function at uh, number three and number five number one and number two and then return the result we store this result in a variable and print it let's run it Eight. The result is eight. With the basic of functions understood, let's uh, explore how we can use the function to repeat a task. In part three, we want to using function to repeat a task, and uh, one of the best thing about function is that they let us to repeat task without rewriting code. We can call or add number function as many times as we want with different numbers for example uh, for example for this uh, code that we wrote at past we want to for example print adding five and six gives and uh, in this position we can give an part of number add number for example five and six 5 is num1, 6 is num2 and also we can print another things for example we can print adding or it's better to use a string adding 10 and <coughs> 13 gives come on we can call add number function and a new number 10 and 30 10 is num1 30 is num2 run this The same function is uh, now used to add different sets number 11 and 40. 11 is the result of the adding of 5 and 6. The 40 is adding uh, the result of add uh, two number 10 and 30. And, <clears throat> and that's a basic introduction to function in Python. Functions are powerful and help uh, make your code more organized and reasonable. Try creating your own functions uh, for different tasks. 
keep practicing and see you next time.